Please pray with me. As we breathe into this time and space, take that deep breath and just feel that life breathe you. Take a moment and sit in that silence. That silence, that dark, that, that quiet, that peace that is spirit. Go into that space that our ancestors knew so well at this time of year that it's the time to slow, to go inside. To hibernate. In order to be fruitful in the spring, we must experience this quiet. So take a break from your hustle and bustle and the craziness that the humans have made this time of year to be. And just be in the silence. Find that connection and know your oneness with spirit as spirit. Be the peace, be the love. And as I know that this is what is true for each and every one of us, I know too that it is true for every person, whether they worship in a synagogue or a mosque, the local golf course or a mountaintop. What I know is that I will never look into the eyes of someone that God does not love. And I claim that love for each and every one of us here right now and for everyone who hears this message. I know that the words of our beloved Reverend Jen are divinely guided, that spirit speaks through her and touches each one of us. That this service would not be possible without the hands of many. Mm. So in this time of going within, I just claim peace and love for this entire congregation for the city of Aurora, for Denver, for Colorado, for the United States, for the world. I know that healing begins in me. And there's no better place to start. So in love, 
and from a place of actionable gratitude. I just know this to be true, and together we say, and so it is. For, ooh, excuse me, for words of inspiration today, we have first from Albert Einstein. Live life to the fullest. You have to color outside the lines once in a while if you want to make your life a masterpiece. Laugh some every day. Keep growing, keep dreaming, keep following your heart. The important thing is to not stop questioning. From William Paul Young as spirit to a man named Mac. This garden is you. This mess is you. Together, you and I, we have been working with a purpose in your heart. And it is wild and beautiful and perfectly in process. And from our founder, Ernest Holmes, begin where you are. It would be unscientific to begin anywhere else. In 1927, the Institute of Religious Science and the School of Philosophy was created under the guidance of our founder, Dr. Ernest Holmes. He had been encouraged by numerous people to create a foundation, something strong, something tangible that would maintain not only our teachings, but the way that we worked with people who wanted to become licensed practitioners and those of us who wanted to become ministers and, and to have those guidelines in place and not to have them fall by the wayside after Holmes was gone from this expression of life. In 1954, some of the leaders within this organization had a disagreement. And then they had a couple. And then what happened as a result was there was a split. A split in a philosophy that taught oneness and unity. And a whole lot of people got a little bit crazy over what took place. When asked about this and what we could do and how we could bring the organizations back together, here's what Ernest Holmes said. He said, of course I know the whole thing will come back together when the right time comes, merely because it is the logical thing to do. And I think in the long run, common sense usually wins. He was not concerned. He didn't get all caught up in the hubbub of what was going on. He just knew that at some point in time, the two organizations would join together again. Over time, the names changed. Um, Religious Science International became United Cent or International Centers for Spiritual Living. The Churches of Religious Science became the United Centers for Spiritual Living back in 2006. And the two organizations, so similar, just kept plugging along. And then in mm, about 2003 or so, a more concerted effort and energy started looking at who we were and what we could become. Ministers, lay people, and a huge, huge push came within both organizations from the youth for us to say ever that we don't need our youth would be absolute foolishness because our teens drove the process. And in 2013, excuse me, on 2012, February 13th, 640 delegates 
of the International Center for Spiritual Living and the United Center for Spiritual Living came together to reach consensus on the integration of the two organizations. At one time, we'd been talking about a merger. And then someone said, mm, that just doesn't feel right. Let's integrate. Let's bring the best of both and put it all together and let's come forth as one. And by 2013, we had a new governance guidelines, we had policies and procedures, we had leadership, we had our first director who oversaw all of the organization as one entity, united, unified. <laughs> the joy of becoming one was palpable. We were celebrating, and I don't know where you were at that point in time, but we were celebrating. At Holmes Institute, it was brought up in every single class. We had those moments of just being grateful for what had taken place and the amount of time and energy and the hundreds and thousands of hours it took to get to this place. In our Sunday services, in our sacred spaces, there was celebration. In our classes, with our youth, with the youth camp, there was celebration, joy of becoming. When we take time to take the steps to create something significant, whether it's just significant to me or it's significant to others, there is a joy that overcomes us when we reach that place. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. A joy in the process. Dr. Ernest Holmes said this, we are not becoming this life, but are now in and of this life. There is no other life. God is not becoming, God is. God is not growing, God is complete. God is not trying to find out something, God already knows. Wow. How beautiful is that? So our talk title today is The Joy in Becoming. So if we're not becoming life, what are we becoming? What are you becoming? You're becoming a better, deeper sense of yourself. We're learning how to cope with things in a way that maybe we never did before. We are at a moment in time, it's like we hit, I don't know what we hit, we hit some kind of huge traffic jam about a week and a half ago, and everything just kind of went Poof. And everything that we saw that was so much, so much, so much just became a little bit more to pay attention to. And so as we look at this and as we look at ourselves and our reflection of ourselves, we want to pay attention to what the part is that we play. God delights in unfurling itself through each and every one of you. Each one of us. Delight. I love that word. We don't use it enough. We are beginning to blossom more so than maybe we did. And, the, and, the, and the, the sound, the voice, the, the conversation I hear from time to time is, are you kidding me at this age, really? You think I'm gonna change? Mm -hmm. Only if you want to, only if you choose. Anna Quinlan says this, what is really hard and really amazing is giving up on being perfect and beginning the work of becoming yourself. I don't know who started the rumor that said we were supposed to show up and become perfect. But we've never been asked to do that. We have never been asked to step into perfection. We've only been prompted and encouraged to be more to do more and to have more. So think about it for a second. Now you might have to reflect back a little bit, but think about a time in your life when all of a sudden you accomplished something. Maybe you went fishing and caught your first fish. Maybe you ran a race. Maybe you participated in some 
uh, educational program and you, and, you, and you succeeded and you came forth with more knowledge and more experience and more expression. Maybe you had a conflict with someone in your life who is dear to your heart and you got together and you resolved it. That's the joy of becoming more, whether it's a task or a being or just an expression of who you are. That's what I'm talking about, to be in that place of joy. Henry Nouwen says, joy does not simply happen to us. We have to choose joy and keep choosing it every day. My dear friends, this is why we were created. We were created by this, this source, this energy, this power, this being that unleashed us into an expression of form. And basically it said, go out there and have a good time. And then we got all crazy and we started trying to be perfect and we started to make things difficult and, and you know, we kind of went down another path. But every now and then we, we, we get it back together and we come back to that joy space. This is what I want us to think about this week. This is what I want us to pay attention to this week is what is it going to take for you to feel joy? And maybe not in every moment of every day because the human part of us has a tendency to get kind of pulled into some of the conditions and the things that are going on. But what would it take? I know for me, in my spiritual growth, on my path, every single day, I can reflect on the day before and see something I did a little bit better. Or I'm going down the old path with the old behavior and I'm becoming aware a little quicker. I'm reeling it in a little bit sooner. Let's appreciate that of ourselves. Let's, let's give ourselves some, some gratitude and appreciation for what that's all about. Thomas Troward in the Edinburgh Lectures said this, there are divine attributes in each and every one of us. But what he said was there are really only seven that matter. Because from each one of these, the next one falls into place. And from each of these, all of them come together. And so he said the very first attribute that we have, that we have been gifted of the divine is love. And that takes us into the second one, which is life. And that leads us into that opening up of light, which is the third and from there, we are able to embrace peace. And from peace, we are able to express our power. Not power over others, but the power within that says, I'm capable. I can handle it. I can get through this. I can support. I can endure. And from power comes the beauty of who we are the beauty of the divine unfolding through in each and each every one of us. And from there comes joy. That beautiful burst of awareness that says, I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. I'm doing exactly what I'm meant to do, and I'm loving it. Like I was talking last week to just embrace the idea of what life is. Be grateful for being alive. Sure, maybe you stubbed your toe and your toe hurts really bad, but be grateful for being alive. Haven Trevino has this quote for us. This is in the, in the, in the book of the Tao of Healing. Quiet the mind. Be still. And watch the breath of God rise and fall in all things. Allow God's breath to be your breath. Allow God's nature to be your nature. God's breath is my breath. God's nature is my nature. This is true for each and every one of us. 
So right here and right now, what is the thing we can do? Because I don't know about you, but I have noticed that there is a whole lot of language going on out there that's telling me it's the busiest time of the year. (laughs) It's the busiest time of the year. And as Leslie mentioned in her quotes and in her prayer this morning, it's time for peace, for silence, for quiet. The joy of becoming shows up for us in the stillness. And when you're getting knocked six ways from Sunday because of all the crazy that's going on in the world, it is time to pause. It is time to stop. It is time to quiet the mind. This is our greatest tool, especially now. And it doesn't take a lot. Walk away from all electronic devices. Go to a place in your house where nobody else is. Maybe it's a closet. Maybe it's the bathroom. I don't know. But take a moment or five and breathe and be still. And allow that peace that passes understanding to completely embrace you and hold you. This is a spiritual tool and a spiritual practice that will carry you through. Otherwise, you'll come out at the end of the year and you'll be all harried and crazy. And you'll be a little stuck. Let's take the time. So I want to talk about a story in the Hebrew scripture. There was a man by the name of Moses. And we hear a lot of stuff about Moses. So so here's what happened. There was this ruling by the Pharaoh, the Egyptian Pharaoh, and they were going to take all of the uh, Hebrew children, all the baby boys, and they were going to destroy them. And Moses' mother built him a little bed boat thing and put him in the the water and launched him. (laughs) And his sister was in, in the bulrushes watching him, and the Pharaoh's daughter came down to the water and found the baby child. She didn't care where that baby came from. She claimed him as hers. So Moses, being a Hebrew child, was adopted by the Pharaoh's daughter. And as he grew up, he was taught all of the Egyptian ways, but he knew who he was. And he could see his people being harmed. They were slaves of the Egyptians. They were beaten Horrible, horrible things were happening until he couldn't take it anymore and one day he lashed out and he struck down an Egyptian soldier and he took his life. And Moses, being the man that he was, knew that that was wrong and knew that he had to hide that fact. And he knew that there was something he needed to do, but he didn't know what to do. And unfortunately for Moses, he didn't know that you don't ask those questions because you're going to get an answer. And so sometime soon after that happened, he was near uh, a mountain, and he saw a bush that appeared to be made of fire and flame. And it was burning, but it wasn't burning up. It just kept flaming and, and, and all of this energy around it, and he was really kind of intrigued by this and then he heard this voice and the voice called out to him and he was frightened because I guess back in the day they hadn't gotten used to the fact that God just talked to him every once in a while and and so he was kind of trying to find out who was talking to him and the voice said I am I am The reason I tell you this story today is because God gave us an example and Moses that we live in the present moment. Our energy, our language, everything is the now. I am. I am here now. I am becoming now. I am. And as you consider the idea of meditation this week, I know many of you, many of us, are challenged with meditation. It's the busiest time of the year. How do you quiet that brain down? 
sit in the quiet. Speak the words, I am. I am. Because what we know today in this philosophy is that all that we are, God is. All that God is, we are. We are one. We are connected. We are united. We are unified with this energy, this essence, this being. This week, take these two simple words, I am, into your spiritual practice. Thich Nhat Hanh, who I believe just had a birthday this month, um, said this, Meditation is to have the time to look deeply, to listen deeply. When you do that, you can get in touch with your true nature and you can release all fear and discrimination. Wow. I have read many, many stories about what it would take, what would happen to this planet Earth if we taught all of our children to meditate. And I'm talking small children, ages five, ages four. That energy that comes forth from that concept of meditation and what that brings to the planet. What a beautiful idea. So this week, if you have 22,000 places you have to be and 18 gifts you still need to purchase, I encourage you to stop in the middle somewhere, whether it's sitting in your car in the parking lot or at home before you leave the breakfast table. Breathe in. Breathe out that breath of God. Speak the words, I am. Allow yourself the joy of becoming peaceful in a time when it doesn't look like we are at peace. It only takes a few of us, and that energy expands exponentially around the planet. Dr. Holmes said this, let us learn to be still, still and let the truth speak through us, to be still and know that the inner light shines. I hadn't thought about it before, but when I'm agitated and I'm emotional and I'm in the moment and I'm reacting, I'm not always truthful. I don't purposefully lie, but I say things that are not a true depiction of what's going on. But if I can sit back and take time to be still and to listen and to be quiet and to allow myself to deepen, the truth comes forth. And sometimes for me, it's, you don't have anything you need to say right now. Eckhart tells us this. All your attention is in the now. You are present with your whole being. Every cell of your body. It is only now that you are truly yourself. Now. So in this now moment for each of us, let us just breathe in this time. Let us recognize where we are and what's happening right now because what do I need right now in this moment? I don't need anything. It's already here. Can I allow myself to feel the joy bubbling up? Absolutely. Can I recognize that all of those tasks and to-do lists don't really need to do, have anything to do with me right now in this moment? Yes, I can. And so can you. Breathe in the breath of God. Recognize your connection to that spirit, to that source, to that energy. Allow yourself this week the joy of becoming and let go of the desire of doing or the obligation of doing. Please pray with me. Practitioners, please stand. 
Hmm. What I know right here and right now is that I am one with God. That this energy, this being, this source, this light, this love lives within me, in my heart, in my mind, in my being. And as I know and recognize this for myself, I recognize it for each and every person on this planet because we are spirit expressing. We are grounded in that unification of who we are and that connection to source and we are, oh, we are such blessed beings to be a part of this. And what we know is in this place where we are is we are reminded, we are reminded we are children of God, we are God's creation, we are spirit expressing, yes, we are. And in that knowing, and in that truth, I can let go of any of my shortcomings. I can let go of any of my mistakes. I can let go of anything that may have happened that hurt me, and I can just embrace this in the now and allow it to fill my heart, my body, and my being. How beautiful this is and how blessed we are. And so as we go our way this week and we move away from this time together, we do so with that awareness of peacefulness within the body, within the being. We are aware of that idea of just taking time for silence, of taking time for calm, of taking time to just simply breathe and be. How beautiful that is. How grateful we are. And so what I know right here and right now is I know that all people everywhere who come together to acknowledge a divine being, the source, the one God as we know it to be, all are blessed. All are blessed. And what I also know right here and right now is that across this land, across this nation, there has been tragedy. There has been loss of life and loss of property. And knowing this and knowing these conditions exist, we just breathe in the peace and send out the love knowing that the love heals, that the love comforts, that the love protects, and the love supports us in moving on and continuing. Mm. I am grateful, 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 grateful for every single person here today and every person who taps, tunes into this message through the virtual network and all people whose lives we touch, even those we just glance at and give a smile, all are blessed, all are perfect. It is good. It is all God. And it is already done in the mind of God. So I just let it go. I just let it go because in this now moment there is nothing required of me. And together we say as we let it go and we let it be, and so it is. Hello, I'm Reverend Jen Wild, Senior Minister for New Dawn Center for Spiritual Living. New Dawn Center is a global community and we welcome all people, all paths, all ways of thinking, all philosophies. So know that you are welcome here and thank you for joining our online community.